Okay, let's solve leak code 15, threesome, the sequel to the popular question twosome. So before you solve this question, the first thing you should do is make sure that you've solved twosome, which is the most popular question on leak code. So you've probably solved it or at least seen it before. I also recommend solving twosome two, which is basically twosome except the input array is sorted. A lot of people skip this question. I think that's what makes uh, threesome a little harder because they don't solve this one first. If you solve two sum and two sum two, this question three sum is pretty straightforward in my opinion. But okay, let's get into the question. So we're given an input array of n integers as per usual. This array though can have duplicates as we can see in the example, right? Two negative ones in this case. Now what we wanna do is find three numbers of this array. So A, B, and C, and, they, and we want them to sum to zero. So in the example, there were two elements or two triplets that summed to the total zero. Now, one problem is that we cannot have duplicates in our solution. So we're going to have to keep that in the back of our minds. So let's just start the most brute force way. We see that we need three numbers. So why not just have a triple loop, right? Just get every single combination of three numbers. That's probably the first thing you're gonna try, right? So let's say our first number is negative three. This is our A. So we're gonna try each of these numbers for B, right? This could be a B, this could be a B, this could be a B, this could be a B. This last one can't be a B because we need at least one number to come after it so that it's a C. Now, if we did that, if we did that with our triple loop, we would find that there is one such combination starting with negative three that will sum to zero. If we take one as our B and we take two as our C value, because then we'll have negative three plus one plus two, that's obviously zero. So to our solution set, we can say, okay, there's a negative three, a one and a two. So now when we move, we can consider this as our first element, right? But eventually we'll see that we go through the entire thing and we don't find anything that can be added to three that'll give us a sum of zero. We'll do the same for this one and there isn't anything. Now we get to a th negative three again though, because remember there are duplicates in this array. So now we're saying again that we're gonna put negative three in this first spot. Now this is a recipe for finding duplicates. This is not good. And we'll see in this example, that's exactly what's gonna happen. There's another, we'll take this as our B, we'll take this as our C. Again, we find negative three plus one plus two sums to zero. So then we're gonna add that again to our result set, right? But that's not what we want. We wanna eliminate the duplicates. So the problem was we took negative three as our A value, right? And then we searched the rest of the array for two numbers, one and two that add to zero. But then we went back here, right? And we found the negative three again, and we did the exact same thing. The problem is we don't wanna have the same number in this position, in the A position twice, because then if there are the numbers that come after it, we could potentially find duplicates. The solution to this problem is to sort the input array. Let me show you what I mean. So here you can see that the array is now sorted. Let's cross out our top array, which was unsorted. So now we are gonna sort the input array. So now when we're looking for all combinations, if we find negative three first, then that's good. Okay, we'll say negative three, then we find these two numbers, one plus two, and then we find our solution, great. Now if we get to negative three again, we'll say, hey, wait a minute, this number was already in this position, right? And we know that because it's, its neighbor, its left neighbor is the same value. We don't wanna put it twice here because if we do, we'll get the same duplicate. So we're gonna tell ourselves that we already computed all combinations that start with a negative three. So we don't need to do that anymore. We already visited this one. We're gonna skip this one and then we're gonna go here. So that means in this case, we're not gonna find any more uh, results in the remaining portion of the array because they're all positive, they're never gonna sum to zero. So then in our result, we're only gonna have the one triplet, negative three, one and two. We eliminated duplicates by not reusing the same element twice. I think it helps to understand a little bit about the statistics of like combinations and permutations to like understand exactly why this eliminates duplicates. But I hope this explanation at least helped a little bit. So now that we know to sort the input array 
and we know how to eliminate duplicates. Once we find our first number, notice, right? So let's say we have a negative three. So then the remaining part of the problem, there's only two elements, right? So it basically reduces to two sum. And you probably know how to solve two sum, right? Obviously, we can put the numbers, uh, let's say that this is our first A, right? So then for the remaining portion, we're basically going to do two sum. And you can do that with a hash map or a hash set. But if you've solved the problem two sum two, you know that we don't need to use a hash map. We can use a left and right pointer. So this is our left and this is our right. And if we find numbers such that left and right added to our negative three sum to zero, then we're gonna add them to the solution set. If the sum though is too big, for example, if our sum was greater than zero, we want to decrease our sum. Now we can do that by taking our right pointer and shifting it. So our right pointer would be shifted here. Notice how that decreases the sum because the numbers are sorted. So if you've solved two sum two before, you know exactly why this works. And I, I encourage you to watch that video if you want a deeper explanation. Now, on the other hand, maybe our sum is too small. Our sum is smaller than zero. In that case, we would shift our left pointer. Because the input array is sorted, if we shift our left pointer, we're increasing the sum. Now, there could be duplicates among these left and right values too. For example, if this this one was a negative three instead, right? In that case, we don't want to reuse the same element twice, even among our left and right values. So we would not use the same, we would shift our pointer once more over here. We don't want to reuse the same value for left and right either, so we don't get any duplicates. Now, in terms of time complexity, remember we are sorting the array, which is big O of n log n. And then we are not doing the brute force with triple loops. That would be n cubed. We are using the fact that this input array is sorted to our advantage. We're using one loop to, to tell us the first value, and we're using the second loop to basically solve two sums. So we're going to have two nested loops, and that's going to give us O n squared. So that means, obviously, the time complexity reduces to just O of n squared. Now the space complexity will depend. So for the implementation I'm showing, it could be big O of one, or it could be big O of n, because sorting actually does take extra memory in some libraries. So it depends on your implementation of sorting. It could be O of n. Okay, now let's get to the code. So we remember we have to return this result as a list of lists. And remember, the first thing you want to do is sort the input array. Next, we want to use each number in the input array as a possible first value. So I will iterate through the index and the value. And remember, we don't want to reuse the same value in the same position twice. So if i is greater than zero, meaning this isn't the first value in the input array, and this value a is equal to nums of i minus one, that means it's the same value as before. That means we want to continue. We don't want to reuse the same value twice. So we're going to continue to the next iteration of the loop. Next, we're going to use our two pointer solution for the remaining portion of the array to basically solve two sum. So we'll have left and right pointers. Left will initially be i plus one. Right will be the end of the list, length minus one. Left and right can't be equal, so we're going to say left is less than right. Now we're going to actually compute the sums. So we'll say our three sum is a plus nums of left plus nums of right. So if the sum is too great, remember, if it's greater than zero, which is what we're looking for, then we need to decrease it, in which case we would say our right pointer needs to be decremented. On the other hand, if it's too small, we need to make the sum bigger. If only I could type today. If it's too small, we need to make it bigger, so shift our left pointer to the right. 
the last case is if this is equal to zero. So of course we have to add it to our result. So to our result, we're gonna append all three numbers. So the numbers are A, nums of left, and nums of right. Now, of course, we gotta update our pointers, but how do we update it? There's a lot of ways you can do it, but I'm gonna show you the way that you can do it with writing the minimal amount of code. So let me just write a comment to show you a little bit. What if we had the two sum, basically for these left and right, and we were at negative two, negative two, so negative two, zero, zero, two, and two. What if our left pointer was here and our right pointer was here? In that case, we might have, we found a solution, let's say, right? Then we'd want to update our left pointer, right? So then our left pointer gets to negative two again, but that's the same one as before. So in that case, we wanna update it one more time to get it over here, right? Now in that case, now our sum is gonna be too big because we're gonna be at zero plus two. So that's greater than zero. So then our loop is gonna execute saying that this is too big and we're gonna shift the right pointer to the left. But notice how that right value is now the same as it previously was too, but that's okay because our sum is gonna, our sum is gonna evaluate as too big so our right pointer is gonna be shifted again. Notice how each value is only gonna have one corresponding value that it can sum equal to the target, which is zero. So we only have to update one pointer and the, our two conditions up here will update the other pointer by itself, we don't even have to worry about it. So in this case, we're only gonna shift our left pointer because we don't wanna have the same sum, we're gonna have to use a loop. So in this case, if nums of left is equal to nums of left minus one, that means it's the same value, so we have to keep shifting our pointer. But remember, we don't want our left pointer to ever pass the right pointer, so we're gonna add that to the condition. So this is all we needed to do. Now I believe, unless I've made another stupid bug, we should be able to just return our result and pass the problem with the most optimized solution. Okay, I'm praying that this works on the first try. Let's see. We passed the test case, the first test case. They really want you to buy Leak Code Premium. This is taking, okay, so it did pass. Usually I have some stupid bugs where I mess up a condition, but okay, so we, Past it. This is pretty complicated. I'm not gonna lie. This is a pretty hard problem to solve if you've only just solved two sum. So I really recommend solving two sum two as well before solving this problem. I might have made it look easy with the amount of code I wrote, but don't let it fool you. I really struggled with this problem the first time I was doing it. And you can see here by looking at the evidence a long time ago, well, 10 months ago, I was pretty bad at this as well. So don't get discouraged. If this was helpful though, please leave a like and subscribe and thank you for watching.